Thanks, Terry. And I, I'd like to also uh, thank all of you for taking time out of your schedules to, to come to this uh, meeting of Genome Medicine 9. And I have to find the little dot here. And just a reminder that uh, all of the materials uh, from the meeting are actually available on a, a website at the NHGRI uh, website. So the, the materials and the presentations are accessible from there even after the meeting is over. Um, and I just wanted to start with a little bit of introduction to the meeting itself. So all of us have seen this graphic many times over the past couple of years, representing the, the valley of death, as it's called, between uh, basic science and clinical applications of basic science. And I think in the past couple of years, especially in genomic medicine, there are some, some cases of successful traversal of this this bridge. In cancer, for example, the emergence of targeted therapies uh, based on genomic evidence, uh, the development of tools and technologies to enable translation of, of genome information into diagnostics, into clinical practice. There are a few wonderful use cases to illustrate that this bridge can, in fact, be traversed successfully. But it's not necessarily a straight shot. Um, so there's a lot of handoff points. Uh, going from basic science into clinical rele relevance. And some of these, in genomic medicine at least, appear to be lost in translation. There needs to be translation of the discovery uh, from model systems uh, to the relevance to human um, and back again. Uh, there's then the need to translate some of these findings from basic science to specific uh, populations of patients and then the translation of the information and knowledge into actual clinical practice. And at each of these handoff points, there are specific challenges and needs, uh, and the communities are often not in perfect alignment to make that possible. So for this meeting, for genomic medicine number nine, we're going to focus on one of the particular challenges along this path from basic science to clinical relevance. Um, and that is uh, understanding these variants of uncertain significance. So genome technologies have really revolutionized approach. We've been generating as a community uh, very large data sets of DNA sequence from patient populations, um, but only a small handful of the variants that are discovered as a result of these large-scale genomic initiatives um, actually have enough knowledge, enough evidence that they can be translated into something that does have relevance to human health. So the objectives of this meeting are really to discuss the gaps, the technologies, and also some use cases of how this, these handoffs and this uh, bridge from basic science to clinical relevance have been successfully traversed. What can we learn from those use cases? How can we what, what do we need to do to better align basic research with clinical medicine uh, in the area of genomics? Uh, those are the kinds of things that we're uh, wanting to come out of this uh, meeting today. And so for the topics that we're going to discuss, it's going to be quite wide-ranging. Uh, there are going to be, as I said, sort of some talks this morning to set the stage from the basic science perspective and from the clinical perspective about where those gaps are. There's going to be some uh, uh, presentations about the successful bridging between basic science and bench and back again. And then we're going to talk about some of the technologies and tools that are being developed and need to be developed further to help facilitate uh, these lines of communication and alignment of research. One of the things that we're not going to talk about, though, just, just uh, we're not going to touch much at this meeting on kind of the, the regulatory hurdles and, and the payer issues. Those are very important and large gaps and transition points along this trajectory, but uh, we, we felt it was important to, to focus our discussions, uh, and those were things that, if we had a week, maybe, but um, we have two days or a day and a half. So we, when we were planning this uh, meeting with the members of the uh, Genomic Medicine Working Group, um, we had as our informal tag, bench to bedside, mind the gaps. But as Terry has shown you from the past genomic medicine meetings, oftentimes what spins out of these 
are initiatives that um, are really powerful and productive in addressing the issues. So we're hoping that uh, uh, when we look back at this in another year, that instead of mind the gaps, it'll be mend the gaps, that we'll come out with some uh, ideas and, and that might spin off into initiatives that will actually help us address some of these transition points uh, that are vexing us in translating. So uh, before I hand it over to, to Dan Roden to uh, moderate the first session, or actually hand it off to Eric in case he has a few comments to say, um, I do want to acknowledge the efforts of a number of people who brought this together, specifically uh, Rita, Rita Chambers in the back here um, with her broken elbow, uh, Teji, um, Ellie, uh, members of the, the Genomic Medicine Working Group who are really instrumental in putting together uh, the agenda that we have today, um, our technology team for setting up the webcasting and the audio uh, portion of the meeting. Uh, without these guys, this meeting wouldn't have happened, so I really want to uh, con uh, congratulate them and thank them for their efforts for this meeting. So with that, I'm um, looking forward to a very productive couple of days. Thank you again all for coming. And Eric, uh, I turned it over to you.